up, you guys? Christina here, and uh, I wanted to go live. I actually thought I was going live on the station just a minute ago. Turns out I was on the wrong platform. Anyhow, it's been one of those days, and thank goodness for happy hour and uh, deep calm. My dog ate my lunch. Um, kids came home grumpy from school. House is a mess. Laundry needs done. Oh, you know the same old, same old. It's just life, right? Laundry needs done, got chores to do, got a party to plan, bags to pack. You know, just life. Well, um, I wanted to go live and talk to you about habits and how on this throwback Thursday, I want to talk about one of my worst habits I've ever had. It's rather embarrassing, but heck, let's just, let's just share all our embarrassing things from our past on Facebook, right? On social media. Well, you guys, when I was at my heaviest, a lot of you know that I had, um, I had a lot of weight I was carrying. I was over half my size larger, guys. I was carrying over 270 pounds, pure fat. Um, I was over 60% body fat. I think I was at 68% body fat. It was really high. And I felt horrible. I could not even climb the stairs in my house without seeing stars. In fact, one time I was carrying my new baby down the stairs and it was so much exertion carrying him and carrying my massive size that my vision went out and I actually got really dizzy and I flipped. I rolled down the stairs, myself and my baby, and I became like this mother cocoon around my baby, around my accident, and, and literally balled around him. He was perfectly fine. So I had a few bruises and some bangs, but not a big deal. So when we talk about habits, don't think you are doing anything that no one else has done. You sneaking out and having crackers, goldfish crackers when your kids aren't looking. You going and having that gallon of ice cream when everyone's at bed. You making that peanut butter and jelly sandwich when no one's looking. Listen, you're not the only one who's done that. So today I'm airing my dirty laundry and I'm sharing some of my worst habits that I've had. All right guys, this is embarrassing, but every night when I was at my largest, and I was at my sickest. I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes during this time, so I should not have even been doing anything. I had no business doing this. And again, I knew better. I knew better, but I couldn't get my heart on board to stick to it. And so, every night after dinner, we would go down to Sonic. Yep. And this habit began when I was pregnant with my accident, my middle son, number two son. And what's really sad, is that both he and I at his birth were considered high risk diabetes. Axton was high blood sugar baby and I was gestational diabetes turned type 2 diabetes. I was a hot mess. And here I am, a new mom, sneaking away to go to Sonic to get a large cookies and cream milkshake that I would just mmm. And what I would do is I would take the lid off and I would buy a large fry and I would dip those fries in that milkshake um, um, and just eat them every night. That was my thing. It's, what, it's like what I looked forward to all day long. And honestly, it was an addiction. It was, it was, it was such a habit that if I didn't get it, oh, I was grumpy. I would find a way. And so when I decided, Girl, you gotta get your life in order. You gotta stop being addicted to milkshakes and ice, and ice cream and these french fries. But I made a decision and you know, honestly, it came on, the, on a bad report. Sometimes, how many of you know this? Sometimes it takes hitting rock bottom to bounce. Well, let me tell you, girl, I hit rock bottom. I was diagnosed in my early 20s with type two diabetes. You know, that's really scary because they're telling me you're gonna be on insulin, you're now you're on metformin. We were a young family, we had little kids. Not only do I already feel bad about myself, but now I'm taking our hard-earned dollars that our family needed to go pay for metformin, which at the time, it wasn't covered by my insurance. And the insulin was crazy outrageous expensive. It still is to this day. And then on top of that, I had a lot of pain. So then they diagnosed me with chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia, 
which was really scary. My mom has that, and she, you know, she's, she, at the time she was in her 50s. Now she's in her 60s. And then on top of that, they also told me, they're like, Christina, your thyroid, you've killed your thyroid. You now be, need to be on thyroid medications, levothyroxine and Synthroid. You killed your thyroid. You've given yourself diabetes. You've given yourself chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia. Oh, and I had insomnia on top of all of this. Not to mention, can we please talk about the emotional issues I'm going through as a young woman who just wants to look sexy for her husband. We're young, right? We're young, we got young kids. And here I feel so frumpy and so tired and so blah. So yeah, the milkshake became what I was looking forward to every day. Because let me tell you, I wasn't in the mood. I was tired all the time. And all I did is change poopy diapers all day. Yeah, that milkshake and those french fries, they were like the party. So I had a lot of emotional hangups tied up with this milkshake addiction, okay? So I have this habit and now I'm like, I gotta make changes. It's gotten to a place where we flew on a plane and they said, Christina, you need to buy two seats. Two seats, I was so embarrassed. I went to, I went to the doctors and this real skinny little nurse girl, she's like 20, she weighed me, she's real snotty. And she goes, she marked down the weight and she snickered. And I got into the doctor's office and I remember this doctor walked in and it, I'd never met him before. And he was like this super young, buff doctor. And he looks at my weight and he looks at me and he looks at my weight and he's like, huh, we're the same age. I can't believe you weigh that much. And I was like, oh wow, thank you. So I had all of this drama that was in my heart, in my mind going on up here. I knew the milkshakes were bad. I knew the french fries were bad, but you guys, I had a habit. I, have, I, was a, I was a french fry addict. I was, I was a french fry addict. I wanted that milkshake. And if I didn't get it, I was grumpy. So when I made the decision that I was gonna leave this bad thing in my life, let's just call it crack, cocaine, heroin. Because let me tell you, in the brain, sugar is the same thing. It, it registers to the brain the same way cocaine does, okay? So that Coca-Cola you always want, yeah, your brain thinks it's the same as cocaine. The, you know, it's crazy how these addictions start. It was just a small trip when I was pregnant that turned into this really bad habit that now the baby's two, right? So, so I make a decision, we're gonna change. First night, I say I'm gonna change, yeah, we go. Second night, we go. Third night, I made it till 11 p.m. and y'all know Sonic is open late. They are open and they are ready to feed hungry girls like me. And I roll up there at 11.30 p.m. And I get my milkshake and fresh fry. And I'm like, what the freak is wrong with me? Is there like something wrong? Do I need food therapy? Do I need like shock therapy? And I realized at that point that bad habits are never removed, guys. You replace them. You have to replace them. You can't just say, I give up sugar and that is it. No, 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 girlfriend. What are you replacing the bad habit with? So here's what we did, guys. So I took that really bad habit, probably my worst bad habit, and I said, we're gonna start a new habit. So what we did is after dinner, because that's when we'd go, we'd eat dinner, which was something bad, and then we would go to Sonic. It was my dessert, it was my reward for being alive, right? <laughs> Wrong. So here's what we did. We started putting the kids, because they're little, into a jogging stroller, and we started going for a walk. And now, listen, when I began, I could barely walk, guys. I was, I was over 270 pounds. I had the diabetes at the time. I'm tired, I'm exhausted, and I don't feel so hot about myself. I hadn't exercised since PE 11th grade, right? So it's been a long time. So we just started walking slow. And what we did is we would go for this walk. We would walk around and I would feel that relaxation start to hit me after about 30 minutes. And that's what I was really looking for. When I would have those milkshake and french fries, I was looking for the release. I was looking for the stress release. I was looking for the euphoria, for that serotonin, oxytocin, and dopamine that would hit my system. And so when I would go for these walks, 
We would walk. We would talk. I would breathe. I'd take deep breaths. I would just disconnect from the stress, from the crying babies, because usually the babies were asleep when we'd go for the walk. We would put them in there and they'd go to bed. And we would just walk. And then we would come home. Because remember, I still had that sweet tooth. And that's a really hard thing to overcome. Because, right? Sugar to the brain is the same as cocaine, crack, any of that, guys. I'm not kidding. Sugar addiction is just as real as drug addiction. That alcohol addiction is nothing more than a sugar addiction because the brain registers alcohol and sugar the same way. So I just happened to have a sugar addiction and we'd come home and we would make ourselves a really pretty chocolate shake, a, a protein shake that we put in ice, put it in the blender, and my grandma gave me these old school 1950s vintage malt cups, malt glasses. I love those glasses because that's where my protein shake went into. And it made me feel, if I added a pretty straw and put it in a cute glass, it made me feel like I was having a malt or a milkshake with my grandma. And I, I had oh, such great, and you know, that's probably where this all came from. You know, I'm just now kind of realizing it, but as a kid, I spent a lot of time at my grandparents. And every night after dinner, my grandma and I, we would go for a walk around her lake and then she'd come home, we'd walk back to the house, and she'd make me an old school, old fashioned malt. So you can kind of see where I have these hang ups from a child, and we all have them. It's the same for me and tamales. Me and tamales are a toxic relationship, as in I'm obsessed, and then they hurt me. They're like a bad boyfriend. I can't go back to the tamales. They're an abusive bad boyfriend. And so, I love tamales. As an Arizona girl, I'm raised on Mexican food. I should probably explain that if you don't know what I'm talking about. So for me, tamales remind me of a childhood where we had fun and we had tamales at Christmas and we had tamales anytime my grandparents came to visit and they'd bring it and it was always awesome. Mexican food for me is definitely uh, reminiscent of my childhood. You know, a lot of people think of pizza or barbecuing or whatever. I think of Mexican food. My parents and grandparents would bring it down from Globe Globe, Arizona, if you're an Arizona native, you know where that is. That's where my mom was born, in uh, Globe, Miami, Arizona. And so they are all about real Mexican food. And so for me, I have to know my triggers. I have to know my habits. And I have to know, which I see now, it's crazy. I wanted that milkshake because it always made me happy. I was always happy at my grandma's house. I was always happy having a malt with my grandma. And you know what's funny? I don't realize my grandma never had a malt. She always made me one. She would just sit and talk with me. Because my grandma was like, she's before her time. She was like organic and natural and hip before it was cool. Like that was my grandma. She was like eating out of her own little citrus trees and growing her own stuff and eating healthy before that was even a thing. I remember my grandma working out even as a kid. And that was before it was all cool, you know? And so, for me, and for you, we can't just say, I'm giving up X, Y, Z. We need to decide today that that bad habit, we're gonna replace it. We're not removing it, we will replace it with something better. And honestly, that habit of walking is something that after dinner, going for a walk after dinner is so awesome. Number one, it helps your digestion. Number two, for me, it's a great disconnect from the day to my evening. It's time for me. It's time to relax. It's time to have fun. And that's why I so love going for a walk. So when people ask me, Christina, I'm new to exercise. I'm new to fit body, or I'm just new to doing stuff like that. Where do you recommend I start? Start where I started, walking. Just like what I'm doing right now. I'm walking. Walking is amazing. Your body is designed to walk. And again, you don't have to walk super fast. You can walk slow if need be. When I began, I probably walked at a two, probably 2.5. That's pretty slow. But that's all I could do. And that worked. And then as I got stronger and I got healthier and my endurance increased and I started shedding the pounds, I was able to walk faster. And then pretty soon, I found myself even being able to run. This is from a girl that couldn't climb the stairs. I'm running, then I'm climbing mountains, then I'm 
running up a mountain. You guys, it's a freaking miracle if you really look at it. But it's the miracle of action. It's the miracle of putting one foot in front of the other. That's all it is, you guys. You can do it. So today, I wanna to encourage you to take your time, write down a few things that you know are habits. Come on, what's your addiction? What's your cookies? What's your pizza? What's your alcohol? What's your sugar addiction? What is it? Do you? What do you have? Because we all have them. No one escapes this. Everyone has habits, hurts, and hangups. And you do too. And I do too. And we gotta just, we gotta, we cannot conquer what we don't face. So, I want you today to write down what's three things. What's three things that have been trying to bully you, boss you, and tell you what to do? What's three things that have been trying to boss you around? Is it your thought life? Is it something to do with your food? Is it something you're taking that you shouldn't be? Is it something that you're drinking that you shouldn't be? Maybe it's something you're not doing that you should be doing. I want to know, what is that? Don't tell me. This is for you. I want you to write that down because that's you putting your battle plan together. That's you saying, I'm going to conquer this, baby. I'm going to conquer this because you can't conquer what you don't confront. If you won't confront it, baby, you can't confront it. You can't defeat it. Okay, so we gotta look it straight in the eye and say, sugar, you are going down. Yeah, milkshake and french fries. Oh, my eyes are on you, baby. You are going down. Or maybe it's lazy Thursday nights where you just sit and watch Bridgerton and Netflix and chill. You are going down, because we're working out. And honestly, this is how you conquer these bad habits, guys. You gotta confront them, you gotta write them down, you gotta look them in the eye and say, I'm taking you down. You are not gonna bully me, body, body. You get no say in what I do. I'm choosing, and I'm taking control of my mindset, and I'm choosing to think on those good things, and I'm gonna take good action. And that's how you conquer a bad habit, you guys. You can't remove it, you replace it. You replace it with something better, something you enjoy. And I'll be honest, at first, trading Sonic milkshakes and french fries for a walk around my neighborhood did not feel much of a good trade. I felt like I went to a used car dealership and was sold a lemon. But you know what, you take those lemons and you make them into lemonade. Because pretty soon, you start to like it. You start to crave that walk. You start to want that healthy milkshake, that, that, that uh, protein shake. You start to want the healthy meals. You start to want that workout. You start to want to go do these good things. And that's when you built a new habit. Congratulations. Put a stamp on it. Mail that puppy because you are in. You're in it. That's when you know you've changed your life. That's when you know you've created a new healthy habit. And it's the most beautiful, free feeling to not crave old ways. You know, the truth is, nothing changes if nothing changes. If you don't make some changes, guys, Nothing's gonna change. You have to be willing to try, and you gotta understand, at first it's gonna feel like you were sold a lemon, but I'm telling you, that lemon makes the sweetest lemonade. It's refreshing, it gives you life, it hydrates you, it makes you feel good at the end of the day. When you trade in those bad things for good things, you're gonna wake up in the morning and you're gonna wake up with a little pep in your step, and you're gonna feel good, you're gonna feel good about yourself, you're gonna hold that head high, and you're gonna walk around like, I'm the boss of my life because you are, honey. You are the CEO of this life. You are the boss of your journey. You're the, you're the head honcho. You are the El Capitan. You're the general. No one's higher than you, Colonel. This is your life. And you get to decide what you do, not the habits. The habits think they have say, but they don't. You do. You have the say. So I encourage you, take what we talked about today Write down at least three things in your life, those habits, hurts, and hangups. You know what they are, and let's conquer them. Let's replace them. For me, I wanna talk about this real quick. This is Slim Shots, guys. For those of you who don't know what it is, it's amazing. But Slim Shots helped me get over my soda addiction, guys. Dr. Pepper addiction right here in the house. I'm telling you, listen, if I can overcome 
my Dr. Pepper chugging addiction, my cookies and cream milkshake at freaking 11 o'clock at night with french fries addiction, my lazy butt addiction, my sleep until 1 o'clock in the afternoon addiction, my staying up all night and sneaking goldfish and graham crackers addiction, my making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches three or four times a day when no one's looking, my eating the whole freaking tub of peanut butter while my husband was at work addiction. Listen, and then I would complain and say, I don't know why I'm not losing weight. Why am I gaining weight? Ah! Girl, Christina, you had an addiction. You had an addiction to sugar. You thought that food equaled good mood. And it does, but not in the way I was doing it. I was eating the wrong foods, guys. And let me tell you, I wasn't eating no life, no vegetables, no fruits, no lean proteins. I was carboholic. I was a carboholic. So guys, today, let's take those bad habits in our life, those addictions, those habits, those hangups, those hurts, let's, let's look them in the eye. Let's write them down, let's confront them. Look, I got a problem with this. And this ain't for me to see, this is for you. And let's replace it. Let's replace it with something better. You got a food addiction? You drink it too much rosé? Is it all the time happy hour in your house? You got a coffee addiction? You eating chips all the time, candy? You know what's going on, guys. You know what they are. Let's write it down and let's replace it. This Slim Shots is a replacement of a diet soda addiction. I believe it saved my kidneys. It saved me, guys. And I love it and I'm addicted to it. Because again, we don't remove an addiction. We replace it. And it's just the personality, it's just human nature. So there you have it, that is how you change your life. One bad habit at a time, one hurt habit, an addiction at a time, you conquer it and you replace it. And if this helped you at all, seriously give it a heart. I go all out for you guys, I try my best to help you. And so if this helped you, share it with your friends, but most of all, make the changes. That's the best way you can say thank you. Is if, if this really does help you, please make the changes we're talking about. Make the changes. Go for the walk. Try the protein shake. Try the Slim Shots. Try a healthy dish. Try it. Don't sell yourself short, guys. Those habits, you are not designed to be conquered by a cupcake. You got this, my friend. You can do it. You can so do it. And if you have any questions at all, reach out to me. Reach out to me either right here, comment here, or send me an email through the website fitbodyweightloss.com. And of course, if you're not already following me, please make sure you are a part of all my social media platforms on Facebook, which is Fit Body Weight Loss, Instagram, Fit Body Weight Loss, Twitter, Fit Body Weight Loss, Pinterest, Fit Body Weight Loss, and of course, my free healthy recipe club, which is on Fit Body Weight Loss. So you can just join up, it's for free. I send out two healthy recipes a week, it's awesome. Um, I think we sent out like a really cool pudding, chocolate pudding this week. It was pretty awesome. So, oh, I like this. I love me some Brittany. So you guys have a beautiful rest of your day. It was good talking with you. You got this. We'll talk later. Bye, everybody.